I'm going to be going into how to use the REPL for Julia and some other aspects that we can use with it. So let's start up here. Okay, so as you can see, I am already in my terminal. If you're on Windows, you can run the PowerShell. I'm running mine through my Visual Studio code. If you're on Mac, you can just search up terminal and run that, and you should be good. So the first thing we want to check is if you had Julia installed, if you did the restart, this would be the first step, is just type in Julia. And if you get this output, that means you're good. This is the Julia standard running, it's telling you what version you're on, and then it's also giving you some commands if you're just confused already on what to do. Okay, so the REPL stands for Read, Evaluate, Print Loop. And now what that means is it's going to read evaluate this statement, I'm going to print it out, and then loop back around. You see, I've typed in two, it did that. Now if I wanted to do an operation, it's going to operate on that, print it out, loop back around. And that's, that's pretty much what it is. It is a little coding environment, and it's nice to do little tests on what's going on. So let's say we want to do print hello world classic test. And you can see, all right, we have our hello world with Julia. Now, other small things we can do is define variables. If we want to define an x, x equals 10. And I have a y equals 5. And then we want to do x plus y. And there you go. We can do other operations, x divided by y. We can multiply them. And all, all the classic stuff. Now you can see I'm getting to the bottom of my REPL, and let's say we want to clear it and get back to the top. You would type in Control L, and now we're back at the top. Let's say we want to make a couple strings. So, hello, and then B can be worlds. And now if you can see me defining strings, I'm using quotation marks. Hello world. Okay. And we have them separated. Let's say now we want to combine them. So to combine or concatenate, you want to use the aster symbol. You put that aster symbol in between the two strings and you do enter. And then you see it, it concatenated the two strings together. And oh, but now it's just one big word. So let's, let's put a space in between them. So now we would define a space like that, another aster symbol, and put that, and we got hello world. Cool. And the rebel is a nice environment. It's very nice to test things out. And if you're wondering, what does this mean? What does that mean? Let's say you see a variable, and I'm curious, um, what is the type of A? type of is another function. It tells you the type of that variable. The type of A is a string. Type of x in 64. Let's say we had a 3.2. Type of 3.2 in that case. Float 64. And you can see this is now outputting all this and because it's instantaneous it's a nice test to see how how these variables are working. Other aspects of the REPL is you can import files into this. So when we actually have script files, you can upload into here. And if those files define variables, then in the REPL, you can just call those variables and see, you know, what is this array? What is this variable? What is this doing? All that stuff. Okay. Now, other aspects of the REPL is the package manager. Now to access that, you want to use the right bracket symbol. You hit that, and you can see now Julia has changed over to this, this name header. And now in here, what you can do is start adding packages. You can remove packages or just see what's going on. So a good first command to run is status. And you can see with me, I have two packages installed. I have plots and pyplot. Now these are two plotting packages that I'm going to be going into in the last couple videos, but you can also have other packages installed and we can also remove them. So let's say I want to remove plots. 
And there you go. Now it's now if I do a status, if I wanted to re-add it, add plots, and do that. This one's gonna take a moment longer. Alright, and you see I installed the package. If I type in another status, and you can see plot is back in my REPL. And now let's say we're we're done with packages, we want to go back to coding, we hit the backspace, and it switches back over to Julia. Control L, and now we're back at the top. Now another cool thing is the help. So if you type in a question mark, you can see now it switches over to this help. And let's say we didn't know what print does. We type in help for print, and it gives you a search for all the different types of print functions or like a similar functions that have print embedded in it and it prints out some documentation for that print function. And here it tells you this is a variable input, takes in this excess variable and says write to IO, conical text representation. And it gives some more and then also depending on the documentation it might give some examples. And help is really nice. It works for any functions that are properly documented. If you import a package and now you have that working in your script, the help will work on it. If the users or the developers for that package documented it properly and you can just search it up. I wanted to do cosine. You see it outputs this compute cosine of x, where x is in radians. Let's say you wanted to see what Cos d does. It's just the other one, computes cosine of x where x is in degrees. Cool. And it's a really cool system. It's nice to check out what is something doing, and as long as it's properly documented, it works out fine. Okay, so that was a quick little test of how to use the REPL and also checking to make sure your Julia is up and running. If that all worked out for you, then it's, it's running and working fine. In my next video, I'll be going more into how to actually code in Julia scripts and we'll do some more complex things. See you there.